Hello there and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you do. Give this a thumbs up, comment, something to help me out. Keep me coming at you. Today's video is a bit of a thrift flip, but it's a, a focused thrift flip, meaning this. I have a number of thrifted items that as I started to look at a lot of my backlog, <laughs> I was thinking they would be awesome as um, outside decor for plants. So whether they are uh, potted plant holders or you know whatever, I decided I want to turn them into things that people can use outside um, add plants to, to be able to decorate up their back patios, their front porches, whatever. Um, and since we're just moving into spring, it's perfect timing. So one of the things to always consider as you're thrifting is what's the season? So what are you looking to do with a particular project and can people use it now? I would prefer to be able to sell things sooner rather than later <laughs> so it makes sense that people can use them now rather than my having to store them for a season or two. So we're going to get started on some of the smaller ones first, but I have a number of different items that I have thrifted that need some work. So we'll kind of get our work our way through them and I don't know how many there are, at least four, maybe five, six. I, um, so the first thing that I got was this, you know, a little bit tired looking candle holder. So a couple of things that I considered when I was looking at this was, sorry, a little bit of a sliver. Okay. Um, I had contemplated turning it upside down and putting a pot down in there. And that was one possible use. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can get those kind of elongated um, pots and I was hanging on to it to do that. Instead, what I've done is I have kind of snapped off the spiky piece that was here. And I am going to attach a basket. So before I paint this, I'm going to get everything attached and paint it up um, because this one I'm just going to spray paint. I, I, the basket's too finicky for me, so I'm just going to spray it instead. Um, and, and we will tape off the blue, um, cobalt blue glass little accent pieces there. But to attach this, because this is like a wire mesh base, perfect for adding your pot because it's going to be able to drain. We have to do a couple of things. You know, it's going to be really awkward to really secure this down to it. So I had contemplated attaching it here because I could wire down through the basket and attach it onto these pieces. So if you're stuck, that's always a good option and a way to make it work. It will be a little bit sturdier this way though. And one thing that I do have is I thrifted these kind of little dog bone coasters. I didn't thrift them for that. I did thrift them because they were a nice solid round wood. So what I am going to do is I am going to attach it in here because I can potentially then attach through the mesh into the wood to secure my, my basket. That's my plan. So to do this, I'm actually going to add two items. Whoops. I'm going to use some E6000 glue um, to attach it. Mine's getting a little old, so it's pretty kind of thickening up. And so I don't trust it 100%. So I'm also going to use some hot glue. So I've got my E6000, and because I can kind of put this on in thick globs in the middle, it can then work in the dip that that surface is now officially known by, right? That's convex, is it when it goes this way? And concave, no, concave. 
one of the cons. It goes that way. So then I'm gonna do some hot glue around the outside. So working a little faster here. Here we go. Turn this upside down and I'm out of the frame, but I just wanna attempt to center it. And let that cool. What I did find was if I angle my staple gun in and right at the very outside edge and really kind of push, I can make this work, which is good because I've also discovered the wood for this coaster is really hard. And I'm not sure I could have hammered down in there. So I'm gonna use a number of staples. means eight <laughs> just to kind of get this from every angle and make it as secure as I can so if someone is putting their potted plant in this is not going to detach because I had one misfired staple and it took everything I had to get it out <laughs> there we go so you can see those staples holding that in and that is secure so this one now, what I need to do is tape off my little cobalt glass um, rings here, just so that they stay, they stay cobalt. And I'm just gonna get this all taped off and then I'm gonna take it over and spray paint it black. So I'm just using the Rust-Oleum black paint. The other one that while I'm spray painting black, um, I have this already made wooden box. Nothing, nothing particularly great about it beyond it was already built and I didn't have to build it. So normally I would paint it black um, using some, uh, of my DIY paint, but because I'm already gonna be spray painting one thing, I'm just gonna spray paint it black. Okay, while those items are drying, we're gonna move on to painting another item, which has two pieces, but it is this that I thrifted. Oh, and you can tell I thrifted it, because it still has. So it was $15, less 30%, so. really only roughly about 10 bucks, 10 to 12. So not bad, but I thought this was pretty cute, right? The seat sits back here. I'm not overly fond of the little hearts on the wheels, but you know, just cause it's not my thing. But what I did think that this would be super cute as is as a planter box. One, you can sit up on the seat. You could take the seat out so it removes. You could line this and just plant florals in there entirely if you want to. Um, you could just put pot, you know, pots of flowers here and a pot of flower up, potted flower up here. You could just give it to your kids to use as a as a toy, right? To be able to wheel around. Oh, their dolls, their action figures, their toys, their whatever, you know, their Legos. Um, so what I thought that I would do is do it sort of traditional but worn. And so I'm going to paint the body of it and including the chair in a red. So that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to paint the wheels just black so, you know, like... Uh, what's my, I usually use a uh, little black dress from, from DIY. Um, so we'll do the rest of the stuff kind of in black. Yeah, um, you know what? It's all gonna be black and red. So we'll do a lot of, of sanding and distressing before we seal it, but that's what we're going for. I'm just looking at it though, and it has not been cleaned yet, so I am going to get 
all of the dirt and dust off. So I'm just gonna use some wet rags first to get some of the basic dust off of it. And then, then we'll have a go. So let me just show you what this will look like. We'll age it out, darken it a little bit, but you know what? Go big or go home, go bold or go home. So I'm gonna get this painted black and red. That's it for this guy. Okay, this box, we spray painted black. It's all dry. Now I am going to want to paint it white and stencil it, but one of the things, and the reason I painted it black was because I wanted to see if I could get a bit of an aged crackle finish on it. Now, I haven't tried this technique before, but I have heard that it works. So we're gonna see. I have, from the dollar store, a can of hairspray. Um, I've never really had a use for hairspray before in my life, so it's nice to know that maybe I've discovered one. Here's, here's what I've been told. If we, and let me just pop a jar under it so I can spray each side. The idea is that we spray it with hairspray. So I'm gonna spray all four of my sides and a little bit of the top lip. And then we're going to paint it and we're gonna leave it. And as the paint dries, the hairspray is supposed to cause it to crackle. Apparently hairspray leaves fine crackles. Um, doing the same thing with like white glue leaves bigger crackles. We're trying the hairspray today. Um, I'm just assuming this stinks. Y'all that use hairspray will know better, but we'll see. So I just want to get a good coating on there more than anything else. Okay, no, it doesn't stink. This isn't as bad as like spray paint or anything. I guess that makes sense. Otherwise people really wouldn't use it on their hair. It's kind of, okay, kind of a, a little bit of a, a light scent to it that in concentrations like this is maybe not as appealing. But let's just get the rim while we're at it. Push it off to the side to dry. Awesome. Now, we do have this guy that we spray painted, and really all that's left to do on this one is I am just removing the tape that protected those little cobalt blue guys, and it's done because we're just leaving it black. It was just that kind of marriage that we made with um, adding that wood disc in there so that we could have something to nail our basket to. But the idea is really um, to check to check your 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 restores and your thrift stores for things like this that you could put together. This on its own was really looking really tired and worn, but matched up together, it's really kind of cool. So, okay, let's just put that off to the side. Okay, <sighs> moving on to another project while we wait for this to dry. Because I'm gonna be using white paint anyway, I thought that I'd get started on white paint. So what I am gonna be doing is, um, ultimately this little wall pocket, uh, metal one, is gonna get painted out in something other than white. But I do, I am going to be attaching it on here and we'll add a bit of a stencil up here um, and leave it for hanging. So I just want to kind of dry brush some paint onto this. So I have, I, I, I'm thinking I might want a different brush for my dry brushing. Yeah, okay. So I just want a really uneven brush for this and, and I have this soft brush because I didn't want to disturb my hairspray overly. So I'm going to kind of, you can see that I'm just kind of brushing onto my
onto my table here, getting a lot of my paint off, but I just want to kind of drag my brush up on this wood. It's kind of uneven. I want to add some, some color to it, some of the white to it. I may, depending upon the color I go with the little metal part, I may add some more color to this. But the idea is with the dry brushing, we're just kind of dragging some color on. I'm letting all of the texture of the wood itself kind of determine where that paint's going to sit and how it's going to sit so that we still have kind of that, that rough, rustic look to it when we're done. I've got a little bit of Farm Fresh from DIY, but it's actually quite liquidy because it has started to dry out, so I've added some water into it. So we are going to kind of dry brush some of this onto the board because I've decided I'm going to do this in a green. I'm going to use apothecary, which is kind of almost like a light version of the Farm Fresh. So I'm going to do some of the Farm Fresh on this. And then, um, so you can see how liquidy that is, especially for DIY. But that's one of the great things about the DIY paint is that, you know, if it's kind of dried up in your container because you've left it sitting for a while, just add some water, leave it sitting. It starts to reconstitute. So none of it is ever wasted. All right, so I'm gonna add a bit more of this all over and then a little bit more of the white. Now, one of the things, you know, you probably see me on thrift flips a lot using, you know, white waxes or things to be able to get a lot of color. And this is maybe something, if it was for inside, I would normally have used maybe some white wax for. I am not using any wax for any of my projects today because they are all designed for outside. So, you know, we, we have to keep in mind what the finished use is because that also gives us an idea of how we need to potentially be painting them up. So I'm not gonna be using any wax products out here because I want these to be capable of going out in the, and sitting in the sun. And I want them to be able to wear well outside. So that all makes a difference in terms of, you know, how ultimately I'm gonna be finishing and sealing these. So none of these products, sorry, none of these projects are going to um, allow me to be finishing these with a wax finish. So I need to be using different products to be able to seal it so that they can last out in the winter. So that's all that I want to do on that board. I just wanted to, to, to leave it still sort of natural, but still having kind of that rough edge look to it. So it looks old, it looks weathered, and it really doesn't take much paint at all. And that's kind of the beauty of it sometimes is, oh, this so is, is gonna be a pain to get off next time. <laughs> it's just too much, too much paint all over and it's not sealing up straight and I'm gonna regret that later and now I'm covered. Okay, claws are never too far away. Not what I should be doing in a white shirt. Okay, so now let me grab a brush over here. I wanna take a little bit of my apothecary. And again, this is from DIY. So as much as this particular wall pocket is metal, it goes on like a dream. So I am going to get this entirely painted in my apothecary. Um, we'll see if I need more than just the one coat for this. Right now, it really is going on nicely and one coat seems to be doing it. But if I need two, I'll do two coats 
and then uh, then we can move on with this one. My uh, hairspray has pretty much dried, so I am going to now add my coat of white paint. What I don't want to do, apparently, is overwork it. So I don't want to keep going back and forth and back and forth. The paint is fairly thick though, so this is making, I'm right at the bottom of the barrel of it, so it's a little bit tougher. We'll see. I figured that the worst that happens is it does not crackle which doesn't mean that I won't try it again. It just means maybe I wasn't supposed to wait until it was dry. Maybe I had to do it when the hairspray was tacky, in which case maybe I'd have to do um, one side at a time, maybe. That would be some of my thinking, so that would be what I would try again. And if it doesn't crackle, then that's okay. I will just distress it and then do my stenciling. This is our next thrifted project item. It's a an old kind of step stool. Um, it does have, you'll notice like down here, this leg extends out, this one's been chopped off. Still perfectly functional. It did require a little bit of shoring up. So apart from a super big clean, because it had a lot of spiders nests attached to it, um, it also has received some extra nails because it was pretty wobbly. Um, but it's good to go. And as much as I would never really trust it again as a step stool up to anything, and let's face it, modern step stools you can collapse and, and put away. So something like this that sits out really is perfect for display purposes. And I think that this would be super cute in a backyard with all kinds of uh, potted flowers and herbs and things all over it and draping down the sides. So that's what we're going to finish it for. So for that, I have um, a little bit of old 57 left in my can. Not lots. Um, and I'm going to add some water to it to loosen it up a bit because it was already pretty thick. Uh, one, it's DIY paint, clay-based paint, so it's already a little bit thicker than you would expect a normal paint to be, or not that this is abnormal, just, you know, a regular chalk paint perhaps. But I want it a little bit looser because I want to do like a salt wash finish without using a salt wash. I'm going to do it with baking soda. So I'm going to add some baking soda in here, and because I was at the end of the can, I just decided to do it in the can. Otherwise, I would have done it in, in a disposable container. But I'm just gonna add baking soda in until I get it to the texture that I want. And what I'm, I'm doing with this is, because it's already got kind of uh, chips and chunks and, and stuff all out of it anyway, I'm gonna be adding a textured base to it. So I'm going to be using the baking soda to create kind of a, a rougher texture to it. And I'm just adding it slowly in there so that I can get it incorporated and so that I can control the texture a little bit better. If I ended up dumping it all in at once, then I'm left with continuing adding baking soda then more water, then baking soda, then more water. It just gets ridiculous. Okay, so what I'm looking at doing, and I'm just taking a chip brush for this, is I'm just going to coat all of my surface with this mixture. So I'm kind of more dabbing it than anything else because I, I got it to have some texture to it and I, and I don't wanna try and smooth all that out. We're gonna do um, another coat or so over top of this. So I'm really looking at adding that texture into the piece more than anything else. So I'm just gonna cover this all over with the old 57 um, 
baking soda mixture, bearing in mind that I'm gonna have to let one side dry and then do the underside as well. All right, so I'm doing all surfaces here, top and bottom of my stairs. So I started out doing it this way, I'll flip it over, I'll do it the other side, I'll let all of them dry and then we'll be back. I experimented on the side and I just wanted to pop back on to show you a couple of things in terms of the best texture that I'm getting. First of all, let me show you this gloppiness. This is the, this is how thick I made it with the salt wash and what with the, sorry, with the uh, baking soda. So what I am doing is I am kind of spreading some on getting kind of a, an even coat on the surface, then dipping in again and going back and stippling over that whole surface. You wanna have enough on there that you're able to get those, those peaks. We want that texture, we want that all sticking. We want that all sticking up because that's what's gonna enable this to um, peek through our next layer. When it comes to our little hanging pot, I just wanted to uh, make sure I mention, I did put a little sawtooth hanger on the back and I did attach this with just one little clip. Now, when it comes to kind of hanging these sort of wire frames, I just typically, use these little guys. They're actually a type of upholstery kind of thing. I just call them upholstery U nails. <laughs> I don't know what they're really called. Somebody help me out, put it in the comments. But I just find that they're perfect for being able to nail in like a wired something because I'm able to um, have that U go over top of over top of that wire and be able to catch it and to be able to hang in there just fine. So it secures it um, with more than enough oomph. Now, generally speaking, just so that just so that you know, and I'm just looking to see if I have a transfer tool. I'm gonna put transfers on this. Now, transfers for outdoor use are not typically recommended because they will wear and fade. But this is something, this is an item that I'm not investing a lot of money in. Whoever's buying it is not a lot, investing a lot of money. And really, if it fades over the course of two years, who cares, right? So this isn't a permanent fixture in somebody's home. And if they get two to three years of use out of it, then I think that we can call it quits and, and be fine with it. What I am gonna do is I'm taking a little um, transfer from the new ephemeral, and then I do have, and I'm gonna put that directly onto the pot, and then I do have a transfer, and maybe some French letter, and we'll see how that goes, that I'm gonna put onto the wood itself, and that one's from the brocante. So I just mix and match, you know, whatever's gonna work for what I wanna do, I go with it. All right, so this paint has not been sealed yet. And one of the things that I will do is I will seal the whole piece. So that will help it in terms of its wearability outside. And we're gonna talk about that when I get to that stage with everything because if, if, I'm, getting, if I'm getting the sealer out, it's because I'm sealing everything all at once, right? None of this little fits and starts but that came off just beautifully and then we take just that white paper backing and we burnish that in I mean look at how cute that little that little one is okay perfect now we're just going to take this big black and white one and we're just going to kind of roughly center it up in there and 
And this one I don't have to be nearly as careful with because it's going on to rough wood and onto an uneven surface. So I do have to push hard and I got lots of leeway of the excess transfer around the edgings. You know, it's one thing to put it onto a really smooth surface, right? But you can tell this board is super rough. We didn't sand it. I left it just that warm pallet wood um, texture, which I really liked for the design. But I do get people asking, gee, you know, how will the transfer work over that? Well, guess what? Just fine. Right? So that looks, that looks great on there. And what I might do is kind of break up this Break up the, this transfer a little bit, so I am gonna have that little narrow edging in between my words. But I'll put the bigger words at the top, the smaller words at the bottom, and then this is ready for sealing. So we've got two things finished, ready for the final sealing steps which is cool. Okay, this is the one that we did the hairspray and looked to get some crackling. I didn't really get crackling on it, but what I did get was kind of a bit of texture. Like some of the paint slid down off of here and you can see some streaks that weren't there before because the paint kind of separated. I mean, it did this in a number of spots. So I'm thinking maybe next time, because you know I'm gonna try it again. Um, I'm going to paint one side, and as soon as I've done that, feel to see if the hairspray is just a little tacky so it's not dry all the way, and then paint over it, see if that makes a difference. What I'm gonna do on this now is I am going to sand it out. So I am gonna do that to kind of smooth out the surface, take off any of the excess paint, and definitely kind of distress it up a little bit more. I will say that that definitely gave a different look to the wear and the sanding of it. So it did kind of create streaks where they wouldn't have been. I mean, this this had a lot of texture anyway, but it did create kind of texture in places that wouldn't have been there normally. So it did give a little bit of a different look, but not the crackle finish I was looking for. So, so I am gonna have to try that again. We'll experiment together and see how that goes. Now on this one, rather than do transfers, I wanted to do some stenciling. So I have um, from the uh, pot stencils from JRV, right? The, the little labels, the little labels. I have uh, this one that is uh, the Western Pottery Company. So I am going to put this on all four sides so that you have it no matter which way you're looking. And I'm gonna be using um, weathered wood by DIY, which is like a really deep gray as opposed to a plain black, just so it's not tons and tons of contrast. Um, so again, for stenciling, I'm taking my stencil brush, I'm offloading it onto my mat so that it's not so um, laden, paint laden, that it's gonna cause bleeding under my stencil. And because this is tons of little lettering and details, the easiest way for me to be able to get that crisp image is to use the pouncing method. I mean, I'll do some swipes and some swirls when I've got big areas, but when I got little, little letters and, and dots and commas and things that I have to deal with, I just tend to find that this works better for me in getting a nice crisp image. Okay. Moment of truth. Now you can see that I use very little paint on that. But then that's 
what you get. Nice crisp image, cute little look, and um, pretty darn fast. So I'm gonna do this on the other three sides. I'm gonna set it aside to dry thoroughly. This is another one that's ready for finishing. So we've got three ready for finishing. I got two more to go. It's now time to get our next coat onto this. And what I have mixed up, um, I had a little tiny bit of DIY Bohemian Blue in here, which was kind of the color that I was thinking of using, but I couldn't be bothered opening a new jar. So I had a bunch of DIY Hey Sailor, which is kind of the navy. Bohemian Blue, it's darker, a little bit more of a teal. Hey Sailor, a little bit more of a light navy. Um, so I added, so I had a little bit of Bohemian Blue. I added the same amount, roughly, of Hey Sailor, and then I added um, the same amount again, like 100% of that, so double, of the um, of water. So I just wanted to create like a lighter wash. So it's pretty thin, right? You can see that it's dripping, but the idea is that we're gonna put this wash over top of our baking soda paint here, our old 57. So this is all rough textured. Ultimately, when this dries, we're gonna sand it back, expose a bunch of this, and then possibly do a whitewash over top of that still. So we've got a bit to go, but we're kind of layering paint and creating a little bit more of kind of just a fun look for the backyard. So here's the thing with this. I am not necessarily looking at needing to get 100% coverage with this because I'm ultimately going to be sanding it back anyway. So I'm just looking at getting an even enough coverage on it that it doesn't look super, super weird and patchy. And I've mixed up how much I've mixed up and I'm not looking at necessarily mixing up more. So. I'm just going to be putting this on all of my surfaces here and letting it dry. And then I'll come back at you for the next step. Now that this is dried, it is time to do some sandy. And for something like this, the, the um, mixture that I did with the baking soda or especially if you use salt wash, dries really hard. So if you're doing something like that and planning on, on doing a lot of sanding, if you can use some kind of, uh, you know, an orbital sander or a little palm sander, an electric sander is going to make your life a lot easier. You could use a sanding sponge. You can do it by hand. Don't think you can't. I'm just, I'm just kind of lazy. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. This makes quick, quick work of it. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sanding it down, one, to smooth it out because it's got lots of highs, like there's a lot of texture here. And I'm going to be revealing more of that old 57, that bright turquoise below. So that in essence, this dark blue becomes a little bit more of the accent color because it's sitting down into the lows. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to get this baby sanded and then dust it off. So I'm going to take my vacuum, I'm going to my shot back, I'm gonna vacuum it all off, um, dust it all down, and then I'll be back at you for the next step. I'm gonna turn you on to music though, so as much as you can see this, you don't have to listen. Okay, you can see this wonderful kind of two-tone speckled effect that this gives you. It's going to deepen even more um, when I add the sealer. Now, let's talk about the sealer. If you follow me, then you know I love wax. I use poly acrylic occasionally to seal things, mostly the tops of things that are going to see a lot of wear, but usually I like wax and I like being able to do my colored waxes and all that kind of thing. However, all these pieces today, I am finishing with the idea that they will be used outdoors, in which case I can't use a wax. 
I can't use a plain normal polyacrylic either. I need something that is going to stand up to outside weather. Now, it's not going to stand up to snow. Take these things in. <laughs> But we want something that's going to be able to, to handle some sun and a little bit of rain. And in which case, you need to use a product designed to be seal to, to be sealing items for outdoors. So you need an outdoor sealer. There are a number of them on the marketplace. Um, I needed to go buy one, so <laughs> I went to Home Depot and I got their thing, which is. Um, this is a, a crystal clear for outdoor use. It's like for wood finish and it is, it says that it is non yellowing. So I didn't do any white pieces, but you definitely want to look for something that's non yellowing. Some of them will say that they, that they age to a golden, golden yellow or creamy cream color. So if you've got a light piece and you don't want that to happen, don't buy that one. <laughs> But you do need something that's designed to be to to stand up to outside. Um, generally speaking, a lot of times the oil-based ones um, stand up better. But uh, it's not worth the migraine that they've given me, so I can't handle the smell. So I will always use a water-based if I can. And I'm also lazy, and I don't want to have to clean um, <laughs> an oil-based one. So you could apply this with a dampened sponge if you would like. Um, I'm using a brush in this instance. You could use a sponge brush. Your choice really. It depends upon the surface. Because this is um, still got a little bit of texture, I'm using a brush because it gets down into it a little bit better and I can work it a little bit more. Um, when it comes to the wagon, the little wagon that we did, it's a lot of flat surfaces. I will probably use a wet sponge. I tend to buy um, car wash sponges and cut them up. And then what I will do is I will wet it, squeeze it, uh, squeeze the moisture out. I will have my hand in a plastic bag or a plastic glove and then use it. I'll be able to rinse up my sponge and get multiple uses out of it because this is water-based, but I throw the glove away. So all we are going to be doing is ensuring that we seal all of the surfaces of this and get it all sealed. And I'm going to do the same with each of our other projects. And then when everything is all dried up, I'll get them staged up. I'll come back to you and we'll check them all out. I just wanted to pop on and kind of wrap up this video with a bit of a show and tell. You can look at this kind of step stool that we're gonna use as our plant stand. I love the color combination and how it turned out. Now I know that this is a little bit bolder for some um, from the standpoint that we've got the turquoise and the darker blue, but know that you can use this same technique with any color combination. So you could do like a, a black stipple with the white over it, so you've got the black and white contrast. You could do them a lot closer in color tone, maybe like a pale pink and a pale green over top, so you've got the soft colors mixing. So it doesn't have to be as distinct as this, but you can see how you very quickly get that kind of rough, kind of aged, kind of crackled looking uh, two-tone effect. So this has all been sealed with that outdoor sealer. We've got our old aged kind of box, that wooden box, which is gonna make an awesome and just really cute kind of rustic planter for outside. Um, this project where we took an old candlestick and added a basket. So, you know, it's anchored in there with, with our wood and that's gonna be cute out in the backyard. Um, a little hanging decor as well so you know taking those really inexpensive and really accessible from the thrift store um, old metal um, wall pockets just attach them onto a little bit of a board and this took no time at all to be able to do all sealed up with that same outdoor sealer and we've got our cute little little wagon now all kind of 
painted in our red and black. Again, you can do it in whatever color works for your backyard, but this was just kind of fun. Our, our seat allows us to do kind of a bit of a raised area for a pot to sit. We can put pots down in here. We could take the seat off because this is removable and just do planting directly into the base of it. But really, four completely different items, all of which can be painted out and staged up in your backyard to give you some new looks and new ideas for creating some floral landscapes in your backyard. And I hope that if nothing else, this kind of inspires you to hit that thrift store and see items that are on the shelves in completely different ways. Know that just with a little bit of paint and some outdoor sealer, you can create some beautiful, beautiful displays out in your backyard, out in your patio, out in your front porch, whatever need be. You don't have to spend a lot to be able to get some really cool, fun, unique looks. I hope this helps. As always, check out queenbeecreationshome.com for any of your paint and supplies. And I look forward to hearing what you think about these ideas and definitely seeing you on the next video. Until then, take care. <laughs>